What's up you guys? My Darwin FPV Baby Ape has hit its final evolution, fully upgraded with an HD video system, more penetration, stronger motors and way more power. In this video I'll walk you through both stages of its transformation and show you exactly how to do it yourself step by step. You also have the chance to win two amazing prizes that you definitely don't want to miss. In Evolution 1 we go from old school analog to the crisp digital world of DJI 04. That's a game changer in itself and all you need is the 04 Lite plus a few simple inexpensive components. And in Evolution 2 we push it even further with a custom DJI 04 lens mod for a wider field of view plus upgraded motors for serious punch in the air. This is gonna be fun, let's get right to it. All right, so for this first evolution, here's what you'll need to get started. Some longer standoffs, these should be 23 millimeters long. The O4 camera has a bigger footprint, so you want that extra clearance. Links to everything are down below. This 3D printed camera support that I designed, just follow the link in the video description, hit download and print. The DJI 04 Lite and some longer screws for your stack because we're mounting the air unit right on top of the flight controller. The stack screws should be at least 17 mm long and if you're going to swap the OG motors with these beefier ones you should also get some 4 mm, even better 5 mm screws. Now quick tip, grab yourself one of these M2 screw assortments, seriously they're super useful if you're into FPV. Not only are they super handy, but if you're like me and you grab the version 1 frame because it's dirt cheap, you can ditch those annoying Philip head screws it comes with and upgrade to hex screws. Way easier to work with and your fingers will thank you. Pro tip, secure the hex nuts to the bottom plate with glue so they stay put when removing arms, avoiding tricky nut retrieval in the tight space between the fly controller and the bottom plate later. First, remove your analog VTX and unscrew the stack screws, then replace them with the longer ones. Make sure to add a metal hex nut at the bottom of each screw so everything fits nice and tight. Since I only got some 20mm screws with my screw kit, I decided to cut them down a little bit to about 17mm so they don't stick out as much. I'm using these pliers to tighten the stack screws but they don't need to be super tight. You can also use tweezers or any other tools you have at your disposal to get the job done. I also shortened my power leads to about 4.7 cm, which I think is the perfect length for the new antenna support that will house the XT30 connector and the antenna for the air unit. Additionally, you can add a zip tie to each wire to act as a strain relief, meaning if we ever have a battery ejection on a hard impact, the battery pads on the flight controller won't get ripped off. This is the old all-in-one version, which is why I'm running a separate ELRS receiver. The new all-in-one has ELRS integrated, so you can just download and print the corresponding antenna support, link to all files in the video description. Now it's time to wire the air unit to the flight controller. Just follow my wiring diagrams for whatever version of all-in-one you have. And if you're wondering why I chose to get power straight from the battery pads, it's because the voltage regulators on this board can't provide enough power for the air unit, its current draw is simply too high, so the only way to keep it running consistently is to get power directly from the battery pads. It might seem a little barbaric, but ever since I started doing this, I've had no issues with the air unit blacking out or losing signal. You can use the cable that comes with your air unit and as you can see I simply remove the S bus and ground wire that would normally be used for the DJI radio link. Now it's finally time to put everything together.
that's pretty much it. But before you head out and trip around, there is one little adjustment we need to make in Betaflight in order for the on-screen display to be displayed in our goggles. Open Betaflight, plug in your flight controller, hit connect and head over to the ports tab. Now, if you followed my wiring diagram earlier, the air unit should be connected to UR2. That means we need to set this particular peripheral to MSP plus DisplayPort. Hit save and reboot. My flight controller will automatically reconnect. And if everything looks like this, you're good to go. You can now configure your OSD and remember to activate your air unit. I've created a video to guide you through the process. Now all there is left to do is to grab your new HD Freestyle Ripper, get out there and just have fun flying. But if you're curious about how to step up your flying experience and get more power out of this little guy, keep watching the video, you won't want to miss it. I chose the iFlight Xing 1404 4600 kV motors for this build and I get flight times anywhere between 5 and 6.5 and minutes. But alternatively, you could opt for the T-Motor F1204 5000 kV motors. Since these new motors have a different mounting pattern, they won't fit directly onto the arms without some modification. There are two ways to handle this. Use a 2mm drill bit to carefully widen the existing holes. This method, while effective, is tedious and not the cleanest solution. Alternatively, you can use these high-precision CNC machine arms that I designed and had made with today's video sponsor, PCBWay. If you are looking for top-notch CNC machining, prototype PCB fabrication or 3D printing, PCBWay is here to help you. They simplify the process of turning your ideas into reality, offering fast delivery, excellent quality and competitive pricing. For custom parts made precisely to your specifications, PCBWay is the perfect choice. Thanks to PCBWay, I'm excited to give away this frame featuring CNC machine arms, perfectly designed to fit your new motors. And if you don't have an air unit yet, I'm also including this air unit with the lens mod purchased with my own money in this giveaway. To enter, all you have to do is subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, drop a comment below, and if you want, share this video with your friends so they can join in too. I will randomly pick one lucky winner and announce it in my next video. The giveaway runs for two weeks, so don't miss out. Now, there is one more thing that we can do to step up our flying experience. By swapping the original O4 lens with this Cadex Retail 2 lens, we get a much wider field of view compared to the 117 degrees the original lens gets you. Now, this might not be the ultimate lens for this mod, but I'm happy with the result despite a fair bit of distortion introduced by this lens. If you want to try different lenses, I will include the CAD file in the video description so you can customize it to your needs. Flywoo recently released the snap-on solution for the O4 Lite that should increase the field of view to approximately 155 degrees, making it comparable to the O4 Pro. However, due to its size, finding a way to mount it on this frame is difficult and it doesn't offer the same level of lens protection as my solution. Which lens are you going to mount? And should I get one of Flywoo's snap-on solution to see if I can make it fit the frame? Let me know down in the comments. But for now, we go back to our lens mod. Sadly, I don't have any footage of the removal of the original lens, but there are plenty of tutorials out there on how to do it. All you need is to apply some heat to the lens and it should come right off. Click on the link in the description, download and print my lens support, preferably in black PETG. I suppose PLA is fine, but PETG just adds a little bit of UV resistance, which ultimately we can benefit from. Make sure to use a dark color for your print to avoid light leaks messing with your image. The lens housing will be glued onto the camera PCB using some kind of E6000 glue. I'm going to use this glue because it's all I could find, but I haven't had any issues with it. But before we glue anything on, we will install these inserts to ensure we can securely mount our camera to our frame later on.
Once the inserts are installed, you can proceed to mount the housing onto the camera PCB. Before doing this, make sure your sensor is clean. I recommend using a fine brush to gently remove any small dust particles. Additionally, screw the lens onto the housing once before gluing it in place. Since the print doesn't have any pre-existing threads, the lens threads may cut into the print the first time you screw it in, which can cause filament particles to fall onto the sensor. The housing is designed to self-center on the sensor, so simply place it gently on top, press down lightly and apply some glue to both the top and bottom for secure attachment. Once that is in place, apply some weight on it and let it dry for a couple of hours before turning the camera around to apply glue to the sides as well. Once the glue is applied, be sure to remove any excess to prevent bulging, as this could cause the camera not to fit properly inside the frame. It's also a good idea to apply some of the same glue to the connector, as this is a weak point where the camera could break and potentially become unusable. Once you're done with that, you will likely have a very out of focus image. Simply twist your lens in or out until you achieve a crystal clear picture. We are almost done with the video, just a few more steps before you can go out and rip this thing around. I'm running BlueJay version 0.2.1.0 at 48 kHz to utilize Betaflight's bidirectional D-Shot feature. You can download my Betaflight configuration file from the video description and paste it directly into your flight controller CLI. Keep watching the video if you want to learn how to do that. Also, if you're upgrading from an earlier version to 4.5.2 and experience gyro issues, here's a quick fix. Open Betaflight and go to the firmware flasher tab. Make sure expert mode is enabled. Click on auto detect and your board should be recognized as Matec F411. Choose the latest version, 4.5.2, and paste this exact line into the Custom Defines column. This will ensure that Betaflight properly recognizes your gyro and accelerometer. Finally, click Load Firmware, then Flash. It's always a good idea to create a backup before flashing, just in case something goes wrong. After the programming is successful, click Connect. A warning will pop up asking you to calibrate your accelerometer. Simply hit Close. Then place your drone on a flat surface. When you're ready, click Calibrate Accelerometer. And that's it! Now the drone displayed in Betaflight should move exactly the same way as your real drone. From here, go to the CLI tab and click on Load from File. Then choose the Betaflight configuration file you downloaded from the video description. Make sure your motor directions, radio settings, modes and OSD are configured correctly. And that's it! All you have to do now is to go out and have fun ripping this toothpick? Okay, 150 grams arguably are too heavy to classify this drone as a toothpick. This thing feels much more like a 3-inch freestyle ripper rather than a traditional toothpick. That said, if you liked the video, leave a like. Drop a comment down below and subscribe to my channel, I would greatly appreciate that. All there is left to say now is good luck and happy flying.